There are many species of fish that can change sex at some point in their lives. Clownfish, they're all born male, and then the most dominant largest fish becomes female. Pygmy angelfish like the potter's angelfish are all born female. Then it works in the opposite direction. The largest fish turns into a male. Hi guys and girls, I'm Reefman, and this time it's all about sex changing fish. So being able to change sex is a great evolutionary trait for a fish to have. You know, for example, if population densities are low, it works out great if they can pair up with two females or two males and then you know, one of them changes sexes. Similarly, if all the fish start out as just one sex and then the largest dominant one turns into another, all they have to do is find another juvenile or another at about the same age and then wait for one of them to change. And they can also just join a harem and you know, keep on swimming. We all know that clownfish change sex once, and we know that pygmy angelfish can as well. And once they've changed sex, they're done. This is called sequential hermaphrodism. If you put two male potter's angelfish together, they'll just fight it out endlessly. If you put two females together, one of them will switch to a male. There are fish, though, that can go back and forth and back and forth, and they are the bi-directional sex changers. So there was a paper recently all about this occurrence in the gorgeous Gobi, which is found in the, re or the, the Gulf of California. The paper, it's linked down below if you're interested, it's titled The Gobi Lithripnus Pulcellus is a Bidirectional Sex Changer, uh, you know, sorry for the Latin. <laughs> it turns out there's a lot of fish that have both male and female reproductive organs at the same time, and then only one or the other is active. If an individual fish is kicked out of a group or one of them is eaten, there's a lot of risk in going out into the reef to find a new group that would let it in. Uh, it'll get eaten, and so that's not so good for the species as a whole. As a way around that, in just about 11 or 12 days, these gobies can actually switch from male to female or female to male to whatever sex is best for their social situation. This is actually pretty rare in reef fish overall. A lot of them can switch sex but a lot of those only switch sex once in their lives. Though our common pygmy angelfish are all sequential hermaphrodites, there are species of marine angelfish that can go back and forth like this. And there's also some hawkfish that can do it, and so can some species of dottyback. And of course, the paper was about gobies, and there are a lot of bidirectional sex-changing gobies as well. This actually can happen even in fish that are sexually dimorphic where the two sexes look different. Uh, for example, the goby that's in the paper, um, the males have a much longer first spine in their dorsal fin than the females do. And when the, fix, when the fish change sex, they also grow or shrink their spines to match, which I thought was pretty cool. So thanks for watching. The paper, it's linked down below like usual if you'd like to check it out. I thought it was pretty neat. I had actually never heard of a fish that can change sex back and forth like this um, as their conditions in life change. Um, we're all familiar with fish like clownfish that can change sex once, but you know, in the end, life uh, finds a way. Take a moment to consider subscribing if you haven't already. I do try to get you know one new video out each week. It's usually about some reef biology, marine biology stuff, and you know I always try to relate it back to the fish or coral that we have in our aquarium hobby. Um, so yeah, I hope you enjoyed. Thanks for watching. Have a fantastic day. Bye.